Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I get asked quite often about pleural decompression, uh, putting a needle in someone's chest, and dealing with tension pneumothoraxes. So I'm going to do a video on uh, demonstrating on how to do this. And this doesn't obviously does not take the place of proper training uh, classroom time. So just by watching a video, don't please don't think you can stick a needle in someone's chest uh, because they have a pneumothorax. So, uh, but this is a video. This is going to demonstrate how to do it, and going to talk about what you're looking for with a tension pneumothorax. You can have a pneumothorax and or a hemothorax. A, a pneumothorax means there's air in the chest cavity, or you can have a hemo, which means there's blood in the chest cavity. If you have blood or air in the chest cavity, it's not good for ventilation or the respiratory drive because the lungs can't expand to their full capacity, and you're not getting the adequate tidal volume that your patient's going to need for their respiratory drive. So as blood or air starts filling into the chest cavity, the lungs, everything start pushing over. Well, your heart's sitting about right here, so if you've got lungs on both sides and it starts pushing over, your heart can't pump as much as it should. So it's getting constricted, which is going to increase the uh, cardiac strain on your heart. So you're going to get an increase in heart rate, your patient's going to have an increased respiratory drive, and they're not going to be able to speak in full sentences. They have some kind of chest trauma here, whether it be blunt or penetrating trauma. And you can also see that the trachea, it's a late sign, but the trachea will start to shift to one side or the other. It will not be midline anymore. So that's something you can look for, but there again, that's a late sign. But your patient's going to have an increased heart rate. They're going to be tachycardic. They're not going to be able to speak uh, maybe one to two word burst. And they're going to be extremely short of breath. So we're going to have to put a hole in their chest. You can put it up here or you can put it on the sides. And air takes the path of least resistance. So if we put a hole here, then air is going to come out and be relieving the uh, pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax here in the chest. Now, it's not going to be an instantaneous relief. It's something that takes time. And the ultimate fix for this is a chest tube, but this is a temporary fix pre-hospital that we can help our patients. There's two spots that you can put a needle in someone's chest to relieve a tension pneumothorax. And the, the two spots are the, the second and third intercostal space here or you can go fifth and sixth here on the sides. Typically what you're going to see is the uh, second and third intercostal space. Remember that your clavicle here, your collarbone is running here, your first rib sits just under that. So you've got to go over, there would be your second rib, and here's the third rib. And so we're going to insert the needle. And the, the clavicle, collarbone actually runs from here to here, so we can come a little bit over on uh, our patient and pull to compress. Remember going over top of the rib, up underneath the rib you have uh, vascular so we don't want to hit that and create even more uh, bleeding or uh, more trauma than we need to. But second, third and go over the rib. Typically what we use is a 14 gauge needle. Uh, honestly the longer the better. Uh, this is a two and three quarters here but we can get three inch needles um, but the longer needle you can get the better because you're going to have to reach through the pleural space and the longer the needle you have, the better chance you are to actually uh, get to the area that you need to. They also make some 10 gauge needles, which are uh, even wider. So, but typically what you're seeing is 14 gauge needles. I'm going to use a little smaller needle on this mannequin so I don't mess it up even more than it's already messed up. We're going to locate our landmarks here. This is the second, third intercostal space here in between the second and third ribs. If you have to, you can take a 4x4 or some bandaging and, and wipe the blood away so you can locate your spot. Once we locate our spot, it is a good idea to use aseptic technique. You can use my call pad, clean the area, and then once you touch it, again, you need to wipe it back. But lo locate your landmark and clean the site. Like I said, I'm going to use a smaller needle. This is a 20 gauge needle. But go straight in. You'll feel it go hit the rib. Go up over the rib, you'll, you'll feel the needle slide, insert it all the way to the hub. Now see this needle goes into a sharp container. And you may see some blood start coming out of here, or you may hear some air coming out. Uh, the easiest thing I've found to do is take a syringe, an empty syringe, attach it to the hub, and simply withdraw. If you get air, then you know you're in the pleural space and you're in the right space. But you may also be getting blood too, where blood's building up into the chest cavity. Another trick is to fill your syringe with about 5 cc's of normal saline, 
attach it to the end of your hub, the needle that you're going to pull to compress. Then as you enter the chest cavity, you'll see air bubbles coming up. Typically, we do not cover this anymore. We don't put a uh, bandage tape on three sides anymore. Typically, we just leave it the way it is now. Um, that's something that's changing too in the pre-hospital setting. So you don't necessarily have to cover this up anymore. You can leave it and let air. It's going to burp itself. If you do want to use a one-way valve, then you can take and cut the finger out of one of your gloves. Insert the needle through one end. Then, as you insert the needle, this part is going to be buried in your chest cavity. This is a little valve here that will open and close on itself. The way they're teaching in TCCC and other military type courses is to find the nipple line, draw a cross on it, and as long as you're in the upper white quadrant of the cross that you uh, made, you're good. Now this mannequin isn't uh, set up perfectly for that idea, but at least gives you an idea if you're looking uh, at your self or looking at your partner that if you draw a cross mid nipple line, as long as you're in the upper right, you're good. This mannequin here is not set up quite the way it would be uh, on a normal human, the nipples way over here. But if you took, laid, or making a cross on the nipple line, as long as we're up in this right quadrant, we're good. Don't get in this quadrant, don't get in this one, don't get in this one. This is where you'd want to put the needle. So same thing over here. We're going to make a cross. As long as you're over on this side, you're good. Don't get in any other quadrants. If we're going to teach this TCCC style and we've made our cross, then as long as we are in this area over here, generally we are good. So insert. Pull the needle back. This goes into a sharps container. And there you go. We have our needle in place and we have pulled decompressed our patient. Thank you for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder.